<clears throat> uh, warden, uh, what can I do you for? <laughs> and uh, Strike kind of looks around at the the bar. I um I was told there is an individual here by the name of Mixie McKinnon. Uh May I speak with her, please? Like, uh, <laughs> he looks between like Mixie, like in the like behind him and Strike, and kind of gives like a moment of like. Oh, uh, I don't know who you're talking about. There's no one. It's like, he's like looking at Mixie like, should I say something? Like, should I tell them who you are? Like, um, uh, Mixie, Please. at this point, you see, you see Urkuth is kind of struggling between should I give out my, you know, <laughs> my family or <laughs> <laughs> oh. this, this individual is, is at the bar. So you, you speak up. Yeah. I I'm just gonna be like, it's all right. It's all right, uncle. Uh, what, what can I do you for? Uh, uh, nice it's never felt right for me. I want a claw that represents the entirety of the people. I was hoping perhaps I could get your unique perspective and your skill set as a member of the team. I reckon it I could do that. I didn't even have to get to the salary. That's good. Um, <laughs> <laughs> rest assured well, it would come with a substantial salary offer and um, we can consider uh, potential uh, hmm. if you desired we could potentially relocate you um, you do sense a slight bit of like clearly this person would want to get out of here from no. him but, uh, <laughs> I don't know and what you, you mean you, but... you hear like Ert and Guth go <laughs> yeah right <laughs> from behind the counter if you'll excuse my foolishness. Uh, he then slides an invitation across the counter to you. One week from today, uh, there will be an orientation of sorts where you'll meet your other potential members. And hopefully from there, we can find a way to make use of your skills for the betterment of the Verdant Clan as a whole. Oh, and um, consider this an advance payment. And you may keep it regardless of your answer. And he hands you an aura cage. Uh, with a green aura. Uh, simply um, break it. Uh, it. Yes, uh, break break the, the the crystal when you are alone to, to ensure it goes to you. And uh, this is a, a green aura supplied from the Chromatic Order before they disbanded. Uh, since fancy. I, <laughs> <laughs> it's the least I could do. If, if I could supply one to every member of the Verdant, I would do gesture to you. It's like, Lieutenant Atwater, is it? Could we have a moment, please? Uh, yes, of course, my warden. It is a pleasure to meet you. Ah, of course. Does the gesture, uh, you do know he does have an aura currently. Uh, do you, do you, I don't remember if you had it in your lore, would you have an aura already? Uh, uh, or a cage? Probably, maybe? I don't, depends on you how... Have, you're, you're a lieutenant yeah. in the Viridian yeah. Seas Company, sure. you have standing. Yeah. Uh, I think it's fair to say, either through your connections, or maybe you even purchased one, but we might not say where you got it from. Uh, you've been around. Uh, yeah, you, you both exchange auras. Um, he seems a little bit impressed that you already have an aura uh, to reflect. How he... may I be of service to you, my word? Uh, well, we've heard reports of your deeds, and um, I know this may seem odd, considering the nature of the right of ordering but I have been granted permission from our Emperor to re-establish the Verdant Claw. And I've read reports. I think you would make a fine addition to my team if you would have it. You honor me, my Warden, of course. I wish to serve the Crown and to also, maybe perhaps, I can help my family as well. I am certain that can be arranged. The salaries are quite generous for the Claw. I thank you. Uh, he hands you uh, a, a formal invitation uh, to come to the, pa the the palace, the Verdant Throne, uh, one week from today for basically orientation. Orientation? I shall take it. <laughs> I think I have the solution. Uh, what would you say to a change of pace and a change of location and scenery and potentially getting out of the city for once? Listening. Father has finally, after months, approved my request to remake the Verdant Claw. 
and he has even allowed me to choose my team. I would like you to be a part of it if you are willing. I think it will provide you new opportunities and new perspective and a good excuse to get away for a bit. Do you honestly believe he would let me do that? I believe his exact words were, choose whoever you'd like. Hmm. Second to me. Would you join me? Ha <laughs> ha! Of course I would love nothing better than to join my brother on the battlefield! We're gonna have to tone that down just a touch. Father has finally seen the, the use of me and will finally put me out. Of course strike, I will join strike, the team. Like, pulls his sword down, like, shield in one hand, brings up, kind of like rubs between his eyes. Yes, uh, yes. Your skill cannot be denied. And I will be happy to call you a comrade. Try to think of a code name, since you already are quite familiar with the uh, the process. Of course. <laughs> I've looked forward to this day for some time. I know, Kuro. I know. I will uh, walk you over to the carriage and open the door. And uh, Lorelei, you do see a uh, Miss McKinnon, Mixie, uh, stepping into the carriage with you. Man, am I living in high cotton? It's <laughs> nice. It's a I go pleasure. Uh, and and your name is uh, Mixie. Mixie McKinnon. Nice to meet you. Uh, are you one of the verdant people too? I mean, aren't we all? I mean, yeah, yeah, but they're saying about this claw thing, you know. Uh, yes, right, the word you came by. Okay, yeah, yeah, yes. me too, me too. All right, we're, I guess we're going to be on the same team together. I look forward to it. I love this. The, the, <laughs> the, the, the lieutenant of the Viridian Seas Company and the bartender of the Black Goat. It's <laughs> like, yes, I saw the warden. Oh, yeah, me too. He came by. Yes, like, really? <laughs> And so, um, Strike will take, will, will come up in the middle of this as you're, you're doing this to, uh, his brother. Dare I ask what, uh, this is? What do you mean? We have new people coming. We must welcome them. We must have a delicious meal for them and ready our new members. <sighs> you know, I, I, I appreciate the initiative, but, uh... I have I heard had... some of them are from down below. They do not know what it's like up here. We should show them what is high society. Good time and wonderful meal. You know, that's not wrong, I suppose. I guess he's like, you see, like he uh, pulls out like a small brass device. It looks like a, a small clock, like a small watch sort of thing. He clicks it. I suppose I could push back some of our appointments for the day. <laughs> Yeah, so it's an right. additional 20 points of damage. I can he see why he's on the pain he, now. This guy goes up from, like, coming up behind Boom with this <laughs> nothing personal kid thing to, like, dodge, <laughs> missing every attack, and then <laughs> getting stabbed in the back. Like, what the fuck? As he now looks like shit. <laughs> Sir, I believe uh, I said, get down, and I'm going to burst for a bonus action. Okay. So I can use my shield. <laughs> shield master feet to uh, uh, yep. knock him prone. <laughs> Looks to Lorelei. Who's still got like the bolt and the bullet wound. Just pull it out, spit yeah. some blood on the floor, throw the bolt down. That'd be alright. He walks up and lays 40 points of lay on oh, hands okay. into you. I won't say no. <laughs> <laughs> I am. Actually, as as you say, I'm okay, and he like he notices the wounds. He puts a hand on, and says, "There's no shame in admitting when you're hurt." I just, but you did I just, good. I thank you, my warden. I just meant I was going to take care of it later, but now it's worth. You guys hear the sound of like rhythmic clapping <laughs> as uh, Lord Aldramos walks out from behind. He's like, "Okay, that was a pretty good display. Seven fifty a week." You see, Strike looks at him and goes, "Fine." Silver. And that is where we will leave what? this 
episode of the Verdant Claw. She regards you for a moment. My brother thinks too highly of himself. He will get himself killed. I cannot allow this. I need to... I, well, I need to also address that he will be an asset, even if it gets him killed. You may be highly... Uh, you may be thinking too highly of yourself as well. Are you certain of this? Do not forget, he's warden for a reason. No, but I cannot allow my brother to die. I suppose if I were to, in my flustered state right now, accidentally mix, mix Dusk Petal in when I should have used Rotwort, I don't know what would happen. <clears throat> If anything happens as a result of this, it's on you. I know nothing of this. 19 to hit. How do you Come want on. to do this? All right. Mm -hmm. So this thing at this point is just surrounded by all of us. Yep. Um, I, as it, uh, who did, who did, as, um, who did attack last? Uh, Me. Mixie. You? Mixie. As it as its head lashes out at Mixie, I jump on its neck, run yep. up the back of it, and just whoosh, cut its head off. As the head is hewn from the body of the Greater Basilisk, the whole thing shudders once and then falls into a heap. And the combat is over. <sighs> you hear the distant splashes of the babies running as far as they can as their mother and grandmother were killed. Mm. I, as a DM, value agency above all else for my players. I want to never make it seem like I'm deciding how the story goes. My players always have a say in how the story turns out, and I denied one of my players agency last week. I, in a moment of I thought to be mercy, faded to black on the fight between Twilight and Ezra Nock. As I did not want to beat down one of my players and then murder him on stream. However, I should have given Twilight that chance. Because what, what ensued after Twilight's death was destruction and chaos and loss and... The remaining members of the Verdant Claw forced to seek out their family and loved ones, taking a final stand or fleeing the nation. The dragon ravaged Port Chimera. And we ended last week on a bad end. A uh, tragedy. With the promise that this week would be a what-if scenario where we see if Strike was there and what if the whole party had stayed and fought and see if there was any chance of victory after all. Then, hours after last session ended, I myself was still awake, as was uh, Twilight's player, my brother AJ, who messaged me saying uh, he just couldn't sleep, neither could I, thinking about how it could have gone and implored me to indulge him in a mock battle to see how far Twilight could have gotten in the fight. We both knew, nah, there wasn't any chance of a level 10 character defeating an ancient green dragon by We both knew, nah, there wasn't any chance of a level 10 character defeating an ancient green dragon by themselves. But it would have been curious to see how far they got. Twilight's class is a unique one. It's a third-party homebrew. Pretty strong. But... Whatever. What the hell? So, and unfortunately this is not recorded, because it was 2am and I thought this was going to be a beatdown. Again, my bad. I loaded up, roll 20, put on some battle music, rolled some initiative, got two points higher than the dragon, remarkably. And what ensued is something I have not seen in over a decade of playing D&D. After over 30 points of decay... All spell slots used, as was calculated after we finished. All daily abilities expended over the course of six critical hits and several powerful healing. Single-handedly slew a CR-22 ancient green dragon that was unmodified and had its lair and legendary actions. And I didn't hold back. 
You can see if uh, oh, I guess Chris could scroll. I do have. He has, he has been. I do have all of the rolls in roll twenty, including my own, because I wanted it to be fair and I didn't want to do my usual box rolls for a one v one mock battle. And it's staggering to even still consider it, but it happened, and. So, I cannot, in good conscience, say that today is the what-if, because it's not. Last week was the what-if scenario if Twilight had lost, but Twilight did not lose. Twilight, against literally every odd, won. <laughs> Kneeling in front of you now is a child of the man who killed your entire family who is prostrating himself not only to a citizen of his father's kingdom, but someone that he turned his back on not four hours ago. What I did is unforgivable. In my cowardice, in my... I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what he would do, but you did, and I couldn't see that. I couldn't see what the right thing to do was. If you want to take my life for those who have wronged you, I offer it willingly. I'd say, like, you'd slowly see her expression go from blank to very angry as she steps up and slaps Shredder across the face. Uh. <laughs> you would you would offer me your life full well knowing that strike I would never do anything to hurt strike. <laughs> And that is why, that is why my words are not needed here. Strikes are the ones that are needed and the ones that will come later. Twilight, her radiant soul, her ASMR form in full blast, Golden wings spread from her back, rises in the air, her scythe held aloft, her body battered and beaten, ravaged by poison on the brink of collapse. Just before the last strike, your body is surged with adrenaline, renewed energy, heat, and flame as your original verdant aura is restored to you. All of the decay accumulated by your false aura is burned away as your new aura takes place. And you strike true one last time with what was hilariously also a critical vorpal strike, which means it also severed the head of Ezranok. Nice. <laughs> Treader. All right. So I'm going to go to this pillar, <laughs> grab on and... You're gonna move on up the pillar. Yes, move I'm gonna move on up the pillar. <laughs> That's amazing. I, I, I give me an athletics check. You got this. Hell yeah. Mister expertise. Uh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Be a man with all the force. Okay. <laughs> oh, just geez, the whole.